G'day. Welcome to Crystal Clear Mathematics where it is easier than you think. And we're currently working our way through Jim Caronis' list of 100 integrals. This being number 29. And number 30 is very similar, it just simply reverses the 5 and the 3. With, as we will see in the next video, quite different results. But both of these integrals require the use of what we call T-notation or half-angle notation to resolve them or, or evaluate them. And the way we recognise this is that we have a fraction that involves a single trig function. And typically this kind of integral is resolved or evaluated using this half angle notation or T notation. So what we do is we make a substitution. We say let T represent the tangent of X on 2. There's our half angle. And First of all, I'm going to find out what dt dx is, find the derivative. So dt dx, derivative tan is 6 squared, x on 2, and then we multiply by the derivative of x on 2, so I'm going to put that in front. Now I can multiply both sides of this by 2, which I'll do, and I can move the dx up here and the 6 squared x down, so I get 2 dt on 6 squared x on 2 is dx. Now this I can replace with an identity or use an identity to replace it. 6 squared of an angle is 1 plus tan squared of an angle and there's our tan x on 2. We have got it squared here so it's going to be t squared. So 2 dt on 1 plus t squared equals dx. So that's going to replace our dx in our integral and we're going to replace cosine of x. I, I'm not going to derive it here. In a later video I'm going to show you, I'm, I'm going to actually create a video talking about specifically this, this kind of technique and I'll show how we derive cosine of x and sine of x and so forth. The cosine of x will replace as we go. I'm hoping that you are relatively familiar with this. Uh, the cosine of x using this notation will be 1 minus t squared over 1 plus t squared. If this is new to you, then I ask you to bear with me and trust me at the moment. Uh, dx is this. over 1 plus t squared. I'm just hesitant since the, I don't want the video to become too long and unwieldy. I guess I can't do everything in every video. <clears throat> I try sometimes. Now, we have a fraction times a fraction. We can do 1 times 2 dt will be 2 dt. And we have 1 plus t squared times this. Now, I'm just going to write 5 lots of 1 plus t squared. But 1 plus t squared times this expression here, the 1 plus t squareds divide out, and I'm left with 3 lots of 1 minus t squared. So this is actually starting to resolve quite nicely. The integral of 2 on 5, expand the parentheses now, t squared plus 3 and 3 lots of minus t squared dt is the integral of 2 over 5 plus 3 is 8 and 5t squared minus 3t squared is plus 2t squared dt and I'm running out of board so I'm going to I'm just very conscious that if I was demonstrating on a sheet of paper, I would have a whole A4 sheet to work on. I have a very narrow range, or a very small amount of whiteboard here. So I'm going to copy this up, and I'm going to divide the numerator and the denominator by 2 as I go. So half of 2 is 1, and half of this expression is going to be 4 plus t squared dt. And in fact, we are exceedingly close now to 
completing our integral. This, I hope, you recognise as a fairly standard pattern. Uh, we'll talk about the numerator in a moment, but as a sum of squares, this usually is connected with a trigonometric function, or with a tangent function. The general pattern looks like this. I'm going to put a half out the front and multiply the numerator in here by 2, so make that adjustment. This is a standard pattern of a over a squared plus t squared. And this will give us the inverse tangent of t on 2. This is just a general pattern uh, that at this level of mathematics you would be expected to know. Again, I'll be demonstrating this in a future video after this series is complete. And now we've got to convert this back into x notation. So x is the variable, and that's actually quite easy. t over 2, we just simply replace the t with tan of x on 2. And I hope you noticed that I hadn't written the constant in, a necessary little addition. And there it is, that's the solution to the integral. Uh, a little unwieldy and perhaps not as elegant as we like, but fairly swiftly done nonetheless. It unfolded quite quickly with this substitution. And as we'll see in the next video, reversing these two does something quite interesting. We actually end up with a minus sign that leads to other issues. But for this one, I hope you found that useful and profitable and enjoyed it. And I thank you for watching.